Hey Impact and everybody tuning in online. For those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Joey. I'm the assistant youth pastor here at Faith Church. I just wanted to get on here and share a quick word with you guys uh, about the greatest gift, the greatest gift. And I wanna share a little bit about our position as believers in Christ. If you guys wanna turn with me to Ephesians chapter two, I'm gonna be reading in the NLT translation today. Uh, while you guys are turning there, quick announcement for you guys. Uh, we will not be having impact next week. We will not be having impact next week, uh, but then we'll return again in the new year. So we hope to see you guys in the new year again. Uh, but Ephesians chapter two, I'm gonna begin in verse one. It says, once you were dead because of your disobedience and many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen wor world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refute to obey God. All of us used to live this way, following the passions and desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. So basically what Paul, the writer of Ephesians, is talking about here is he's saying that we all have sinned. We've all disobeyed. And in the beginning of time, God said, obedience leads to life, disobedience leads to death. And each and every one of us at some point in our lives have uh, walked in that disobedience, which leads to death. So we're uh, by that choice that we made, we're under God's wrath and there seems to be no hope. But watch the good news that God tells us in uh, verse four. But God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us as shown in all he has done for those who are united with Christ. So God decided to show great mercy and grace towards us and he sent to us a great, great gift. And he said, you know what? If you've disobeyed, you've turned, you've lived in your sin, but you know what? I'm gonna extend this grace towards you. I'm gonna send my son, Jesus Christ to you. And I'm gonna, when you accept him, I'm gonna bring you into such a position that you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. You see, when Christ bore our sin on the cross, well, that was our sin, so we were united with him. Then he went into his death and he ascended to the right hand of the Father. So when he ascended, and since we were united with him because of our sin, he brought us into this heavenly realm. So we're seated with him in heavenly places. I'll tell you why this is such good news. Our position in Christ is in heavenly places, right? So since that's where we're seated, we can then act out of a place where our position is in the heavenly realms. We don't have to sit there and say, you know what, I'm gonna try and work my way to heaven. I'm gonna try and get to heaven because of all the great things that I've done. No, you can stay in a position of holiness because you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. Now, this shouldn't be a confidence to say, well, I can just do whatever I want because I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. It should actually be the opposite. Since I'm, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places, we should act out of a gratitude where we're saying, you know what? I want to serve God. I want to serve Christ because of the great sacrifice that he made for me on the cross and because I'm seated with him in heavenly places. I heard a really great preacher say this one time. He said, when we sin, we do not understand our position. When we sin, we do not understand our position. Because if we truly understood our position, we'd understand the great power that we have over sin. Because if I'm all the way up here and sin is all the way down here, then I'm seated so much higher than any form of sin. I wanna uh, bounce down a little bit uh, to verse eight. It says, God saved you by his grace when you believed and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. You see, the greatest gift is salvation. We just came off the Christmas season uh, just this uh, last week, and it was Christmas. We were opening our presents, and we were enjoying that, and we you know, opened a gift from our mom and dad or our friend, and we didn't really do anything to deserve that gift. You know, We were just born into our family, and our parents gave us a gift. 
It's the same thing with Christ. He gives us this gift and we open it. And the question is, will we receive it? And once we receive it, again, we get seated in that great position right next to Christ. So really and truly, no matter what we do, no matter what our actions are, we're still seated with Christ in heavenly places as long as we've accepted Christ. Now, I don't want to make this sound like we can just do whatever we want and it doesn't matter what our actions are because the book of James talks about how our actions matter, that faith without works is dead. But works is not what saves us because of that great gift of grace that Jesus Christ has lavished on us. I want to show you a little bit more of what I'm talking about with it. Uh, we can't exactly just do whatever we want. Uh, Romans chapter 6 talks about this a little bit why we should uh, why we shouldn't go on sinning it says in Romans chapter 6 well then should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace so can I just sin even though I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places even though you know Christ has made the sacrifice for me he's given me this great gift can I just keep sinning and just uh, have some more of this great grace that's a gift from God well Paul says in Romans of course not since we have died to sin how can we continue to live in it or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Jesus Christ in baptism, we joined him in his death? For we died and were buried with Christ, and just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we may also live new lives. We can live a new life in Christ. We, should, we don't need to keep on sinning. We don't need to have to just say, you know what, I'm going to keep taking advantage of this grace. We can operate out of a place of thankfulness and confidence in where our salvation is through Christ Jesus. We can continue to obey him confidently. And it's just so wonderful that we're ascended with Christ in this position. So whenever you think about serving God, begin to think about the position that you have in Christ and the great grace that he's given us so that we can operate out of a place of thankfulness rather than a place of uh, worrying, you know, if we're going to be saved or not. So let's operate out of a place of thankfulness to God for the great gift that he's given us. I hope this touched you guys today and God bless you. We hope to see you soon.